Wow, what a week. Next year 16 just got released and there are so many new features such as cache components, fast should be rendering, finally is stable. Turbo Pack is now the new default. We have next year's build adapter API, next year's MCP server, and so much more. And one of them is part of a huge debate and a lot of people are making fun of it. And all of a sudden this four-year-old React Directive use no memo is finally getting a lot of attention. And this one here is really funny, use common sense. But next year 16 has shipped so many exciting features with Turbo Pack being finally stable. We now get two to five times faster production builds, up to 10 times faster fast refresh. And this is huge because now Turbo Pack is now the new default inside of next year 16. It also finally shifts with partial pre-rendering. And partial pre-rendering allows you to provide a static HTML when the request comes in and later on all the dynamic parts as they are ready get streamed in. The dynamic parts need to be wrapped around a suspense boundary so that the user has something to see while the dynamic data is being fetched. And now partial pre-rendering is in fact part of cache components which is a opt-in feature. Cache components let you mark a page component or a function cacheable by simply adding this use cache directive. And this directive pattern has been part of a huge debate online. There are so many people that have made fun of this directive architecture and think maybe we pushed it too far this time. At first we had use server, which allowed you to expose functions as HTTP endpoints, also known as server actions, and then use client, which allowed you to mark components as use client. But now we have pushed too far with use cache, use cache remote, use cache private, use workspace, use step, and everything is used blank, which is why a lot of devs are roasting it. And here's why. Use directive is not enough of a boundary and it feels like there's a lot of magic burden. They're not extensible. They simply feel like magical strings. There is no type safety, no runtime control. It's so easy to make a typo and break your entire application. So the real question is why not expose as a function so we could import it. And basically, Tanner Leslie, the creator of the Tanstack ecosystem, also had the same concerns. Why are we doing this instead of just simply writing a function? And this is what Tanner is trying to say. We have this function called as get product that fetches the product from a database. If you want to cache this function, then you could add this use cache directive at the top of the function. And this is simply just a string. Now here's the issue. You could accidentally just type use cache with a typo and the compiler wouldn't even care because it's just a string liberal. And TypeScript doesn't even know that use cache has changed the semantics. There's no autocomplete, there's no linting. It's just, trust me, it's correct and it works. So Tana's point is that these magical strings feel fragile. We can easily extend them or validate them to the type system. And they lean heavily on build time conventions and not explicit runtime contracts which is a concern for sure. But this is what the directive use cache actually does. It isn't just a gimmick, it's part of cache components, which is a new opt-in feature that lets you cache either a page, component, or a function. If you think of it as a react.memo, but instead this time it's on the server. For example, if you have this specific component called as product list that lets you fetch a list of products and you display a grid, you can cache this function by marking it as use cache. And when you add use cache directive there, the result of this function is then stored and reused across requests. So if multiple users hit the same page, it's not going to re-render or refetch. Next and React are just going to use whatever is cached and return that. And this is exactly how it pairs well with partial pre-rendering. Now we serve the static share instantly and then stream in the cache pieces of dynamic content. And there's a lot that I can talk about use cache. So I have a separate video on that to cover it in depth. So check it out if you're interested. But here's what the directive pattern unlocks. They become the semantic boundaries for the compiler. When the compiler sees a directive, it's allowed to treat that function differently. You can transform the code, restrict certain APIs, and enable compiler level optimizations that just aren't possible with a simple import. So if you remember use strict, well, back in the day, we used this use trick, which was a tiny string that changed how the engine behaves. With use cache, it's the same idea. You are telling next that, hey, this component is deterministic. It's safe to memoize and reuse its rendered output across requests. 
So whenever a decision is being made, there's always a reason for that. There's a really good post that Versal has shared on and what are the different experiments they did before they went with this use directive pattern? What are some of the challenges, the lesson learned, and so on? So I'll definitely link it down in the description if you're interested. But these directives give the compiler permission to reason about your code and sandbox it. So what this directive truly unlocks is that it gives your compiler permission to reason about your code and perform a lot of optimizations that are not necessarily possible with a import approach. And the second use case for this is in the AI world. Now imagine you're building an AI agent that runs multiple steps such as generate something, research and refine and summarize. The problem is that when one step fails, your application restarts, you're going to completely lose the context. So this is very useful that is direct, another directive called as use workflow. Now use for workflow brings in the durability, reliability and observability to your async JavaScript. So you could suspend, resume, and maintain state in your applications. So what this means is, let's say if you were to take a look at the agent, AI agent workflow function, then every step is a workflow step. And the streaming response is basically passed on from step to step. And this is a huge pain point when it comes to shipping AI applications, AI, AI agents in general, while you're building AI apps, because without this, it's really hard to trace which step failed, and you, by, you may lose a lot of credits by after retrying a lot of times. And this just allows you to provide proper debugging and lets you inspect it step by step. You could pause, replay, and time travel through steps with traces. You could log them, you could see the metrics automatically, and so on. But by simply adding this directive use workflow unlocks all of that so you could build AI agents seamlessly. And because this use workflow is a compiler time signal, the compiler transforms this into a orchestrated workflow so it can persist progress, it can survive restarts, and it can replay deterministically, which is what is important. And this wasn't necessarily possible with a regular function call because then the compiler would have to do a whole program analysis to track it, which can be messy and unreliable, which is not exactly what you want. So yes, it's a string, but it's in fact at a compiler level, it's a compiler switch. So I don't truly really get why everyone's joking though, because this use thing pattern is not just a meme. It's probably maybe a hint where the web is heading. And whenever we try to change things in terms of how we work, there's always going to be resistance, but resistance does not mean it's a bad thing. React started out the same way. A lot of people said that, well, JavaScript and HTML, ew, like the, no JSX, we don't want that. However, JSX became the norm and people eventually loved React. So maybe one day this directive pattern would maybe love or truly hate it and we just go back in next 17 or whatever the next version is. So use workflow is truly, or this use pattern will slowly start to feel normal. And what I truly think about it is I'm pretty dogmatic about this. I do agree that it could have been a function. Because even with like use server pattern, which basically by adding a string in a file, you can expose a function and create a HTTP endpoint. Devs don't really get it, especially if you are a junior dev, it will be very difficult for them to truly understand that this actually exposes a, a brand new API call. And if you don't protect it, that could lead to more security issues, security vulnerabilities, and you don't really want that. But, but I also do understand, like when you're trying to optimize a lot, there's a lot of decisions you have to make. So could this have been a function? Maybe, but functions don't reliably grant compiled num semantics, which directives do. So if you want deterministic caching, resume, resumable execution with strong tooling, then this is probably the pragmatic bridge is what I think. And I also get why Next.js and React team are probably experimenting because if this works, it's gonna simplify a lot of the processes at compile time. It can simplify backends, queues, become like the React for backend architecture that Guillermo is talking about here. 
But so yeah, like people are definitely making fun of next year 16 and these patterns, uh, such as these use directive patterns. But overall, I'm extremely happy with the next year 16 release. I want to know what do you think about it? What, what do you think about this new way of doing things? And if you want a full next year 16 cheat sheet, then definitely check the link in the description below. It's completely for free. Well, that's all from me. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.